Ah! Ooh. Got a loop underneath there. Elbows in a little bit. That's a hard area to get to. There we go. Give me a four. Ah, ah, Let me ah, ah. But to me, it's like size doesn't matter. If size mattered, that means the giraffe would be the king of the jungle. That's right, ladies. Get a little close to you here. What's going on out there in YouTube land? Today I'm with Triple C, Olympic gold medal winner, <laughs> two division champion, one of the greatest combat athletes of all time, Henry Cejudo, Triple C, the king of cringe, the man from Maryville, Man, how many nicknames you got? No, I don't know, but that's a great introduction. First of all, you scared me. I think I might have <laughs> sh sharded when you... Uh... <laughs> Showed you where the bathroom was. <laughs> uh, so he's in town. He's helping John Jones out a little bit. Uh, you know, they've worked together during this camp. Henry has a great eye for fighting. Two of the highest fight IQs I think that we've ever seen in the game working together. So anybody who wants to go against this team, boy, I don't, I don't know, man. Sign, you got a, your, sign a waiver. You got your work cut out for you. It's, you bring your lunchbox, I'll tell you what. <laughs> So uh, we got Henry today. We're going to work a little bit with his neck. He and I both just got back from Bio Accelerator. So shout out Bio Accelerator for hooking us up. We got stem cells pumped into us. We got to enjoy a little Ayako and Sancocho. Um, Speaking about that, have you been going to, uh, have you been getting stem cells for a minute? That's, that was my second time down there. Second, yeah, same thing. But yeah. I, had a, I had a really good result last time. So yeah, same thing. I, I better have because I wouldn't have gone through that if it didn't, if it didn't help a lot. Right. Because I got my butt kicked. So. As you guys have probably heard, Triple C has a title fight coming back up. He's coming out of retirement, uh, looking to win this belt back. It's his belt, really, if you think about it, because he never was defeated there. And then uh, after he fights this fight, he may be looking for a quadruple C coming up. And the C doesn't stand for cringe this time. It, it's quadruple champion. <laughs> so... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, you're too good, dog. You're too good, but yeah. Exactly when I tell them, they're just babysitting my belt. That's it. Okay, there it is. Keeping it warm. All right, so you a little scared for this? Or are you? Um, I, I, no, I, th I think I'm more curious because I, you know, I've I've gone treatment from man all across the world. You know, from my Olympic days to MMA to just traveling all across the world. So, you know, I've heard nothing but uh, great things about about you, doc. And uh, you know, I'm just excited because I'm always trying to find the edge and and everything that I do. And uh, you know, if, if you know, we're just trying to find other things that maybe you could tweak and maybe I can realize maybe where I'm probably compensating and how is it that I could be better. Okay. Cool. He knows his body. He, he's been in the game a long time, whether it be Olympics, whether it be winning state championships in Arizona, in Colorado, I mean, you name it. So he's ready for a little bit of work. Let's go. All right, Henry, tell me a little bit about your upbringing and like what got you into wrestling to start off with. Oh, um... Is this a trick? <laughs> Honestly, uh, man, I think it's just through nature and nurture of things, you know? How, you know, how, who you're raised by and obviously your, your persona, man. Who are you as a person? Are you a fighter? Are you a scrapper? Are you a lover? You know? And I think, I think also just honestly, dog, it's just understanding your gift, man. And I think, uh, I think since I was a kid, I kind of knew that I was different. So your brother was an undefeated wrestler, right? Yeah, so my brother started wrestling first, Angel. You know, we're just two ghetto, you know, we're actually two hood kids, you know. We uh, didn't have money to do much. The wrestling was free, he found it. We, was all, we used to always like to fight around the neighborhood. You know, it, not necessarily street fights, but just fighting, just contact. And... Uh, my brother was super good off the start too. And then I, when the first time I saw it, I'm like, man, I love this one-on-one -on -one competition. And then off the back, honestly, me and my brother were both naturals. My brother, by his second year wrestling, he was, he was already a state champ. Wow. He was already like a legit state champ, which was kids that had been wrestling since they were, you know, five, six. And how old were you when you started? About 11. Okay, it's kind of late actually. Yeah, 11, 12. But then I had a chance to kind of see my brother come up and I was just like, oh, okay, I started, I became a fan first. I think that was important. Rather than just diving in, like I liked, I liked watching. I, li I loved the attention that the, that the kids were given mm. when they would compete and win. And you're obviously a natural competitor. So just, there's nothing more pure than just one-on-one -on -one combat, whether it's jiu-jitsu, wrestling, fighting. It's like, I beat that guy, you know? Yeah. Some, some things with me is I'm, I'm a conqueror, dude. And I've learned like, I can get bored with, uh, or not necessarily bored, but I always want to do what's next. 
you know after the olympics yeah i could have gone off and maybe try to win more world titles but i wanted i wanted to fight man i wanted to become a a, a world champion of something else i dedicate myself to that now mm. You know, and able to accomplish it. And even with fighting, I even retired from fighting because I wanted to accomplish new things. Right. And I did. Baby. You married, baby. Yeah. By gym. Uh, well, I don't run the gym, but I got into real estate. Okay. You know, started my YouTube. Trying to reach. Trying YouTube to, career. Trying to catch up to your million. There you go. Million, so if you guys didn't know. <laughs> he's got his YouTube channel going. They're doing fight breakdowns. They're doing behind the scenes training. Uh, he's putting you guys, putting you on the game, really. Teaching technique. So right now, unsubscribe from my channel right now and go subscribe to Henry's channel. Right now, stop the video. You can come back to it, but leave right now and go subscribe to his channel. Yeah. Link's below, so I'm going to link it right there. Make sure you show him some love. I mean, this is an Olympic gold medal, an American hero. He even named his child after America. Yeah. This is the man right here. So go show him some love. Subscribe to that channel. Drop a comment below. Uh, and also tell us which which of your Henry fights is your favorite. But can I tell you something though, Doc? Like it was like even these last three years since I've been I've been uh, you know away from the game and not competing, mm -hmm. and it's 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 been dude, it's been the best years of my life. Nice. You know, it's like I'm not like fighting doesn't define me. Okay. Competition doesn't define me. It's just it's going for it. You know, attempting, trying. And obviously, yeah, trying to conquer. Yeah. You know, that, so, that is the main goal. So he's coming for Mr. Beast's title. So, <laughs> you know, this is, this is not a guy that likes silver. So if you guys didn't notice, he's coming from the gold play button next. He's already got the silver. So get him to gold, man. Let's get him some subs. So you obviously were very good off the bat. You even went to Colorado Springs in high school, correct? Yeah. So I, I moved out to the training center by the, uh, at the age of 17. So I got I got pretty much sent out there to be an experiment. Because I started to win in every national tournament. All the national tournaments here in the country. And they, they knew my situation. Or they started seeing it. And I went out there one time to go train with uh, Patricia Miranda, who was uh, trying to win the Olympics. So they brought me out there as a training partner. I was that small. And that whole month that I was out there, like, I never complained. I never was never homesick. Like, I was eating, sleeping, wrestling. Like, I was training three to four times a day at the Olympic Training Center. Mm. You know, I got to the point where they called my coach. They're like, hey, man, is this kid trying to, what is he trying to prove? In Spartan mode. Yeah, and to me, I was just so driven to the dream, you know? Yeah. And I was wrestling with everybody. I think everybody started taking a liking in me. And I wasn't doing it to fucking live there. Right. That was never my idea. Like, I was like, man, I could live here. Right. I was just trying to take advantage of the cafeteria. They had food and... PT, Cairo, yeah, massage, all that stuff. Yeah, you know, jacuzzis. Like, I was just like, man... Great I was, facility. Yeah, I wasn't raised... I was You didn't have all these luxuries, no, right? No, I had my own bed for like a month, which, which felt weird. You had your own bed? Felt yeah. weird? Yeah. What, what does that mean? No, it's just you know you grew up with a bunch of siblings. You share, man. Oh, so you didn't have and your the, own bed. The majority, before you went yeah, the major, the majority of my, the majority of my life that I slept on the couch, man. Wow. Yeah. Holy, <laughs> you were in a state title sleeping on the couch. Yeah, it's, that is not optimal yeah. recovery, man. So you, you know, you kick ass, you win state titles, you, you know, end up on the Olympic team. First youngest gold medal winner in U.S. history, twenty-one years old. Yeah. What was that moment like? Was that oh, like? Man, it's like. How, how do I describe it? Man, it's... Uh, Can't tell if he's really thinking his answer out here or we've got a good trigger point. <laughs> yeah. Damn, yeah, you're hitting, you're hitting me in areas. I'm just like, damn, dude, they, they need to be awoken. You know? Um, it's surreal, man. You don't believe it. You know, it's... Uh, it's a joy, man. It's it's it, it's 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 almost like it's every emotion because it's even a sadness to it. A sadness to yeah, it. A sadness to it. Yeah. Tell me about that. It's like you're so happy that it's emotional that it allows you to cry, but then it's like you you're feeling these different emotions, just like damn. Think about all the things that went through was, to, get to this point. Yeah, because I was such an underdog too to win. I went through some shit in '08. Yeah. You know what I mean? I had to qualify to get to the Olympics, and I had to beat the Olympic silver medalist to make the Olympic team. And then I was losing that whole year. My dad passed away a year before the Olympics, and uh, I was still training hard. I was still doing everything right. And, uh, you know, talk about people just the least likely to succeed, and I ended up winning the whole Olympic Games. And I knew it in my heart that I was the best in the world, that I could be the best, or that I could be the best in the world. So it was just like, a, it was an emotion that I was able to let out, man. Mm. 
That was just like, see, I knew it, I knew it. Ah! Everybody. You know, precious, man. There's a uh, UFC title, don't, they don't even fucking tickle his toes, bro. Right. It's become, especially in the sport of wrestling. Well, that's what a lot of people don't realize. Like, A, you know, a lot of different sports can lead to MMA, right? But only wrestlers that have been wrestling for a long time ever get near that threshold. And B, this is something that it's hard enough to make the team. Like yeah. that on its own is just the craziest challenge. You know, there's guys that run through the NH was the NHCA bracket and are all Americans in high school that could never sniff the Olympic team to begin with. And yeah. then once you're on the team, now you're going against the best in the world. Yeah. Everything has to break your way, and you only do it every four years. Yeah. So you're you know you might if depending on your age you might be in or out of your prime. You know you only have so many goes at it. Yeah, and yeah, then you get caught up in a 16-man bracket, a 16-man bracket with all the best guys in the world, and they all have Olympic dreams. It's not like, oh, yeah, I'm fighting for the UFC title because so-and-so fucking pulled out. Right. It's like, no, these dudes, they, they know that day that they got to show up. And all of them and, have been working for this day since they were six. And 99% of them leave crush. Right. It's only that 1%. You're like, dude, I'm out. Yeah. It's Thank only, you. Only one man gets the gold. Yeah. It was That's pressure. I couldn't sleep, man, like for the longest because I was just, it was just this joy. Like, like my reality was better than my dream. Like, so, once, so once you won that, you said you wanted to get into fighting. Did you ever think about going like the Kurt Angle pathway? Or is that in your future already? Like, what do you mean? Like the WWE? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, not really, Max, because, you know, being being like a little uh, smaller guy, uh -huh. like I knew they were going to freaking use me as a... Ring gonna, stereo? Yeah, they are just going to throw me around. I was like, dude, I love my back. I love my body. <laughs> I'm like, there's other ways to make money. Okay. Even though I'm a big fat, I like to do like maybe like a one-off yeah. or something like, that, uh, something like that, but I never really pursued it. I, I think I could have. I think I would have been really good at it. Yeah, man. You got mic skills. You know, you're good I tell you something. Ooh. There it is. <laughs> there it is. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, and, and that's part, of, part of my... Triple H, hit him up. Yeah, like, part of my gimmick now, Doc, it's it, it's that, man. It's just, it's it's a persona, but it's me. But it's also, it also challenges me to, I got, I got now I got to eat what I'm saying. You know? I'm trying to decide what's the better heel turn. It's you or is it heel Wani? <laughs> He's been throwing 10 sevens out lately, man. Uh, uh, Ariel? Yeah. Yeah, that big nose bandit. He, he, went, he went heel turn on us, man. Yeah. Calling him Hilwani now. Yeah, yeah, we used to be friends. The king, the king of cringe and Hilwani, the heel turn. You guys might yeah. have to re reform a stable here. <laughs> you know, set everybody else on fire. That's all it is, bro. It's just, it's a, uh, it's, it's business, bro. Gotcha. They may not like me, but they'll watch me. So you get an MMA, you get the call up for the UFC. You know, when yeah, I think you were ten and zero, right? Uh, tell me about the call up when you got to fight Mighty Mouse the first time. What the process felt to you like, and then. You know how you kind of bounce back from that and then ended up defeating him the, 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 the and mighty taking the belt back yeah the mighty mouse loss like getting knocked out in two minutes and 36 seconds through the knees is like the worst thing that could happen to a fighter like it's ego but i felt like i needed that and i remember when he put me out i just man i felt like the biggest bitch, man i felt like he snatched like my manhood from me and now i was like no, no. i said like, this is fucking personal man mm. like you know what i'm saying i was like yeah. no, I'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna, I'm gonna get him back get you it wasn't, it wasn't even like with everybody else, it's about the world title. It's like, yeah, I want yeah. the belt. When he beat me, I was like, no, this shit, this is about him. Yeah. This is about him. No, this dude, this, this dude, you know what I mean? I got to get him back. Yeah. Like, I couldn't I couldn't leave the game like that. Right. Because think about it, Doc. Like, oh, dude, I, was, dude I, I have probably over a thousand wrestling matches of competition. Mm -hmm. If I was to really count. You know, was, you, you get sick of competing, but then when I lost to Demetrius, he put that chip on my shoulder. Okay. And the fashion that he did it. And then seeing him do flips afterwards, and then he did a little bit of this. <laughs> and then I was just like, ah! You gotta get it back. Yeah, dude, I remember like, oh, and he, he, it was a great stoppage too, and I, and I respect him for that. Yeah. But th that be, having that chip on my shoulder, like it just, it gave me a different, it gave me just a different angle, bro. Like, yeah, I really started to understand who the hell I was. Okay. You know, I was meant, I was meant to fought to get up and to do it right this time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and it seems like you love to challenge yourself. Like, first of all, just you know, getting to the UFC with so few fights is a challenge, right? Getting in there with Mighty Mouse, you know, at the time had like 12 world titles or something like that. Yeah, he was going for his 12th title defense. So yeah. even you know, obviously John, if John didn't you know 
get in trouble. <laughs> John, you know, John Allegedly. would, ha- yeah, John would have the consecutive, you know, the title defense. The record, yeah, 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 the record. He's got, I think he's got like fourteen. Yeah. But man, the way Demetrius was able to do it, Jesus. Yeah. And the way he was doing, it, and the way he did me, I'm like, man. I says, I know I'm going up against the pound for pound best fighter in the world. Mm. So it, it, it was more, it was more of that motivator of. Uh, of proving it to myself, man. If I can do it at the Olympics, there's no reason why I can't I can't do it here. Yeah. There's no reason why, as good as he is. And so you guys are friends now, right? Like, I, oh yeah, dude. I watched, we're, we're you guys haven't like, watched them. They like watch their fights back together, where they, yeah. where each of them got the W. So I wonder if we'll ever get a trilogy, at least in grappling or something. Do you ever feel guilty that it feels like the UFC was like waiting for the moment for somebody to beat him? Yeah, they, to, like, they wanted him out. To like ship him out, because like yeah. now that you're boys with him, you're like, damn, I kind of. Got you yeah. sent out of Dodge, you know? Yeah, but I, I think I think it worked out for him, though, financially. Yeah. And it was, and you, when you speak to Demetrius, he'll tell you, no, it was my idea to leave. Okay. Like, he wasn't even thinking about the rematch. Mm. And now I'm just like, man, I respect you even more. Yeah. Because you're like, no, you're able to let go. You're not, you know what I'm saying? Like, for me, like, I had to get that leg back for him. It was like, I already beat everybody. I already beat him, too, which right. was me. It was like, no, let me make some money now. Let, yeah. let, let me go feel appreciated financially. Right. And I'm just like, no, he gets it. He gets the game. So you have the win over the, what a lot of people call the 125 goat. And no, he is a 25 pound goat. There's just, to me, he's only second next to John Jones, that makes the greatest sense. of all time. So there's, there's nobody else, man. There's no dispute. So then, who's your top five? Then you got Jones. I got Jones, Demetrius Johnson, two, Anderson Silva, three, uh, uh, George St. Pierre, four. And man, you guys are gonna think I'm crazy, but I put me at five. I don't hate be, it because I, because of what I've and, and combat uh, because of my double champ status and who I beat. Yeah, I beat three Hall of Famers when I won my belt. Yeah, that's what and, I was getting. And, at. and I'm a two division champ. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, and how I and how I beat them. Yeah, yeah. Demetrius Johnson would have been his. It was a split decision, but dude, I knocked the brakes off of TJ on APO, and then I knocked out uh, Dominic Cruz in the second round. Right. So. So you'd be both the the co kind of one thirty five. Goats is, is what people will say too. Yeah. At a division that you were had a, a big height disadvantage at. Yeah, yeah. But to me, it's like size doesn't matter. If size mattered, that means the giraffe would be the king of the jungle. That's right, ladies. Ain't that right, Captain? <laughs> he is. Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> I, I actually took that line from him. You okay. Know? We're the shark kings. There you go. So yeah. So it, it was. It was. It was a bit of that dog. Like it. Yeah. Uh, some people need that chip on their shoulder, man. Right. And that, that's that's what I was getting at. You them. keep, all right, I beat Demetri. Uh, all right, let me get TJ. All right, beat him. All right, let's get Dominic Cruz. Yeah. And now I keep hearing you say, okay, Volkanovski is in your, in your uh, 100%. target. 100%. And, and, and guess what? People, people will doubt me. But I, I can only ask the people one time again, doubt me again. He needs that fuel. Like, doubt, feed yes, him. doubt feed me Feed him again. more. Yeah, feed, feed me, man. Maybe this one might work a little better for him. Oh, Jesus. Ah! <laughs> Take this arm, go in and out with it like that. <laughs> so, uh, go back in and out. So, obviously, your base is wrestling. I also read that you have a background in karate and Aikido. Is that correct? No, no, no. I just had a karate coach who uh, who was able to teach me. And I was able to really pick up on, on the distance game. And was that before you were in the UFC? Or was that, no, no, no. no. That, that, was, that was So, once I lost to Demetrius. So, let's get back to Demetrius Johnson. <laughs> So once I lost to Demetrius Johnson, like I knew that I I knew that I was a Ferrari, mm-hmm. but I had fucking Honda mechanics. With okay. all due respect, you know what I'm saying? But it was true. Due respect to Honda? Uh, no, Hondas are good. But what I'm saying <laughs> is like it's just it's a different car that you feel different, that you work on a different. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like uh, no shit. Personally, I like Hondas, okay. but. You, you know, you understand what I'm saying, yeah, yeah. right? And I, I just needed the right engineers, and that wasn't that was my fault. I lost because of me. Right. I didn't lose because because your my striking co- style definitely, you know, the, the, the bladed stance, the the palm out, like yeah, so giving what, people problems with your your striking style. Yeah, now. and I, yeah. So what did I do? I traveled the world, so you know. For, oh. Same thing on this. Side. Ah! Move that arm in and out. You got this, champ. So what I did is I traveled the world and, and I let go of all my coaches, but this one right here on the chair, because okay. he was telling me to let go of all my coaches. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you have it. No, I'm kidding. But I had to. Uh, I just had to, bro, because it's like there's no way, man. Like I needed more. 
and I've also learned to take matters just matters into my own hand. Okay. So I tell people all the time, it's like I'm not loyal. I'm not. I'm not loyal. I'm not loyal to anybody but my dream. And when you're loyal to the dream, you exit your emotions out of there. Right. And it's your job because you're loyal to the dream to find the right engineers. And when that happens, that's when you're able to succeed. I like that. It's strictly business, man. Right. It makes a lot of sense. Because I, I, I ain't gonna get, I ain't gonna get right. beat up again. Ah. So shrug that shoulder. <laughs> and then drop it down. And then shrug it up. And drop it down. And shrug it up. And drop it down. And there we go. keep it. <laughs> and you do have a little bit of uh, like WWE affiliation. I noticed. I saw the Bella Twins talking about you the other day with this promo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're homies, dude. Uh, mm, uh. Are you guys from the same the same town? Is that what that is, or? Um, we're from. We live. We actually we live close to each other. Okay. Now, but they grew up in Scottsdale. I grew up like in the west side of Phoenix. Yeah. So you didn't you didn't grow up the same. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, but they're they're, they're she's uh her dad's Mexican. Okay. Or their dad's Mexican, which was pretty kind of cool to find out, you know. So there's a uh, being an immigrant son is like it's different, bro. Like we're a different generation, you know. And then you have us here in New Mexico that you know the border moved over us. Yeah. So New Mexico, just add water. Up. Exactly. It's like the old one, but like <laughs> a little newer and a little different chili. Slight, <laughs> I would say slightly cleaner, but it's actually not. <laughs> you guys are in the hood tonight. The other gym, hood. I saw like a few zombies down there. Yeah, dude. bro. Like they call it the war zone over there. Yeah, I heard, dude. <laughs> Everybody's strapped over there. Walt Harris was like, is it really that bad over here? Everybody's strapped. I'm like, yeah, well. <laughs> so so who's the, the mastermind behind uh, your fight week performance outfit? You know, the, <laughs> throwing the snake around. Is that you? Is that Coach? Yeah, no, that's all me. That's all you? That's all you, but, but I'll get ideas from these guys. Okay. I'm the one that's going to do it. Right, right. You, you know, so they don't come up with that, but then, these, but then like Eric will chime in on some other things that they'll just like, uh, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's all him, because I'm the one that went shopping for all that shit. Oh! <laughs> True, but it's it's. I have the logic. Hey, dude, I'm thinking about because even when I fought TJ, yeah, I was like, hey, man, I want to get a, uh, I want to have a snake and whip that shit on the ground before my face, yeah, yeah, before my face off. So then Eric, so then Eric buys a snake, Captain. So then Eric buys a snake that looks fucking real, dude. Or yeah. even Dana White yeah, like yeah. flinch. Yeah, you know he's like, <laughs> they're telling me that the animal. What is it? The animal uh, feed it. Yeah, Peter. Yeah, Peter. They said Peter freaking called the UFC or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> He's beating up a. So take, when I whip, take it easy, Peter. So when I whipped the snake down on the ground, I'm just like, all right, dude, I'm all in now. Okay. But think about this story. Like this was all to save the flyweight division. Like I wasn't planning on having a persona, because you know everybody wants to be liked. Sure. But then I was just like, now I'm a champion. Now I'm getting pay per view points, and then my, and then the flyweight divisions on the chopping block because Dana White was trying to get rid of it. So then I had to kind of create that persona, like bring noise, like start mm. selling. So then once I knocked him out, you know, my post fight interview, I'm like, you know, this is for the flywood division. I hope I did enough to save the division. And then uh, nothing happened, like there was no talks. And then once I won my second bout, and when I beat uh, Marlon Marias, because then TJ tested uh, hot for EPO. Mm. But then once I fought Marlon Marias, and then I won, and then it was like, man, I love this kid. The flywood division stays. So then it just so the persona had a purpose. I don't think people see it. Right. I don't think I think they're I think they're blind. And you know, it was good. It, it was it was added value, bro, when I was able to save fifty seven jobs, dude. You know, fifty seven yeah. families, bro, you know, are now able to eat because of triple C. There you go. <laughs> so uh who's who's got the right. most toxic fan base in your comment section? What's that? Who's got the most toxic fan base? Which country, which fans? Ah, uh, for me, it's all of them. Because I'm sure your comment section on Instagram it, gets, gets, uh, dude, I, gets dude, pretty if spicy. People, if people really knew, like, if people really do I laugh, I'd be laughing at these <laughs> comments, dude. Ah! I'd be enjoying all that stuff. Ah! You give them the props and they come up with a good one. You're like, hey, oh, that was, yeah, yeah, dude, that was kind of good. Especially on Twitter, they'll put, like, certain faces or... <laughs> 
<laughs> that's pretty good. <laughs> so with the heel stuff, like who who are the greatest heels in UFC history? You gotta put you to put a like Colby Chael, uh Chill. I've been wanting John to go full heel turn forever and he's like he didn't yeah, want to. I think he yeah. And John John I think John would be good. I said, John, just go full heel, bro. Just roast everybody. He's like, nah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd say Chell Sonnen. Chell Sonnen started it in MMA. And then, uh, whew, yeah, I think uh, Connor's one of them. Yeah. Kobe, uh, George, Masvidal. Yeah. Whether, he wanted, whether you guys think that shit's real or not, not, it's a persona, dude. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Scarface. He, yeah, he 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 plays he plays a little better than everybody else. Yeah. But when you think it's real, but nah, man, there's <laughs> or maybe it is, right? Maybe, maybe it I'm is. confused. Yeah, I don't know. And then yeah, I think I put myself up there. Okay. I think uh, you know you add controversy, and then when you're able to back it up, you're you know I'm doing it right. You know, you've been in there with a lot of legends. Who who do you rank as the best fighter you ever fought against? Is it Mighty Mouse? Yeah. Yeah. Demetrius. Demetrius is the most. Co- yeah. You view him as like an equal. Yeah. Your counterpartner, dude. Yeah, yeah. Would you, because would you do it? Right? speed. And I had to fight him. Like, when we watched that fight together. Yeah. Like, I had to tell him, like, Demetrius, this is why, this is why the judges gave it to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, you might have hit me more. Yeah. But I was able to, I was able to uh, persuade them so much better than you. And then we watched the fifth round. He survived the dreaded peroneal yeah. nerve. Yeah. Yeah. And on top of that. And I was like, and, 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 and even that, that, I was like, and I was like, Demetrius, I said, you, you could have. You could have finished me, bro. Yeah. Like I was hurt, dude. Like I fought you for five rounds with the with the high sprain, with the with the ankle sprain. Because first the nerve goes right, and then you can't use the muscles on the outside, but and you, then you keep spraining it over and over again, right? But you still feel it. Oh. It's like it's like your foot's asleep, but that part of your ankle is like still it's wobbling all over the place. Still alive, you know what I mean? It's yeah. like your foot's asleep, but not that part. Right. That not, part the, hurts. not your ankle part. Yeah. But yeah, him. So, so you're gonna go out there with one foot against the greatest fighter of all time and have to go five rounds? Yeah, but land, I was, land that inside trip when you need to, and yeah, and then I had to take it there. I'm just like, and I, I, I stole that fight from Demetrius. I beat him. Yeah. I beat him because I stole it from him, taking him down at the right times, controlling him. Yeah, maybe I didn't do anything up top, but I was able to just eat up that time. Yeah. And then those last ten seconds of the fifth round, calling him out, getting him to go backwards. Let that go. So I'm going to have you bring this knee up and then bring it down and out and keep doing that motion right there. Just, oh, ah. So straight down. Ah. You got ah. the chip and then up and then down and out. Ah. 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 Oh. Ah. And there we go. Give me a few more. So we're going to add this to your submission ah. uh, repertoire here. It's called get up in them guts. There we go. Get a little easier. Sorry, dog. I had to get. You're good, bro. I had to grab your hands, dude. So, so you know, sometimes you just got to hold hands when we're in here. It's, it's all good, bro. All right. Holy so shit! It's even you out. Let's go, champ. Let's go, champ. So y'all gotta go give him a sub if he's going through this. Oof. Let's go. Move that knee. Ah. Bring it up. Bring it up. Bring it up. Ah. Straight down. Oh, tighten the maps, man. Ah. There we go. Now it's like butter. Easy. Look, you beat it. You went through the adversity, and you beat it. He's good. Oh. You're doing good, man. You got this. All right, so other than going, getting this belt back, what else do you see in your future? You talk about real estate, you know, are you gonna be coaching more? It seems like everybody's um, been coming out to train with you. Uh, Waylee. Yeah, but, but, yeah, but I, I'm, I'm more of a counselor than actual coach, you know? I'm more of a, I just wanna give advice and, you know, choose your team, get your team going. Like I'm not, I, yeah, what, what I would, you know, I do take content from these guys that I do train with, but right. in reality, I'm not your coach, man. Right. You watch and film with them, and you help them pick I up watch tendencies. Film with them, yeah, because then it, because it's up to them to take them to take them where they want to go. Okay. You know, it's just me to kind of be like just pinpoint certain little things and little tendencies that you know they yeah. can take advantage of. Yeah, and this is why, like John, John's already come. He's he's come up 
uh, four times ready to train with me. Right. You know, it's just like he, he's all he's the most humble dude when it comes to training. Right. Uh, you'll ever coach. Yeah, that's one thing about you know him is when he finds he's got a good eye for talent. If you notice, like a lot of the coaches he has around, he picks pretty great people around him, and he knows exactly, particularly people that people don't hype up. Like he'll pick people who be like, that guy's got a good eye for this, he's got a good eye for that, and then he leans heavily into them. Um, and it seems like that's what he's realized. Like him having a good eye for watching film and picking things out, he's picked that up in you. And it, I think he feels he, he's got an equal as far as like fight IQ in that sense. Yeah. Because I think when he watches film, a lot of times he might be sitting there with somebody who doesn't see the fight game like he does, and he's getting mentorship maybe from them. So when he sits down with you, he's like, "This guy's seeing things like I do, but just from a different angle." And I think that's why he respects you a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He does. And for a guy like him to reach out and be like, "Hey, like I want to come down and train with you," like, I never, I never hit any of these guys up. Yeah. Richard Johnson hit me up. Like all these guys hit me up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The only guy that I really hit up because of uh, a coach wanted me to hit up, and he ended up coming, was Yuri Prohachka. Okay. And he came down, and I'm just like, hey, bro, my coach wants you here, but hey, I could help you. And he came down, he beat Glover. Yeah. And there was those, uh, n not saying that I was part of the reason, but what I'm saying is you're able to add to people's game, and sometimes that's the difference. Right. Just a little bit. Yeah, because problem. it happens with me. I, I bring in people to add to my game, and I'm able to succeed. And you pick up little tricks yeah. and things from him. Yeah. Is there anything you learned specifically from John, like working with him, too? <sighs> yeah. Yeah, it's. Anything you're willing to talk about on camera? Uh, we'll no. probably hold off. We'll hold off. Yeah. Because it's uh, it's, it's good just, stuff. It's, it's too good. It's, it's too, too good. good for TV. And if he is gonna talk about it, you're probably gonna have to sub to his YouTube channel, so it's not there gonna be go. here. There you have. So there it is. All right, let's go land your back here. Now is this this is decompression on what the lower back? It's gonna get your whole spine. But it's designed to target your lower back. There we go. Perfect night. It feels like a roller coaster. It's going up, going up, going up. And now's where he gets nervous. So we're gonna go right there, and right there. So just try to relax completely there, and then bite your teeth down. No, oh, Jesus. Damn. <laughs> Also, from the top to bottom. Whew. I'm just gonna stay here, right, Doc? It's always it's always good yeah. to stay, right? Like, yeah. like. Let your body kind of soak it in. So that goes right down the center. So it gets the intervertebral joints, whereas like the regular manips are gonna get kind of the facet joints more. Oh damn! You got it. Yeah, I've never had this done. Yeah. yeah. Did you? Was it? Is this your system? No, it's uh, my friend, Dr. Gregory Johnson. He's the OG. He's been practicing longer than I've been alive. Damn. So he designed this table. Yeah, he trapped the hips. Uh huh. Lift the. Yeah, I see. I see. So what it takes the curve out of the back, so you don't lose force along the curve. And, and your pull was just right. Yeah. Like I practice. was afraid a little bit. I was like, "Fuck! How, how much is it gonna yank me?" It's not that much. And then he just boom, and yeah, then yeah. I felt it from like my lumbar all the way to my, the top of my damn. It feels like my brain, like everything just. Like, yep. That's crazy. I've never, I've never been pulled like this. And those are different areas than you could get with like the twists or any of that other kind of stuff. So yeah, you, like I said, you can imagine lifting the legs up, curves the pelvis like that, gives you a straight line in the lumbar spine, and then when you block it, all the decompression comes from right there. So how often, how often do you, how often do you recommend something like this? Most of our athletes, you know, typically three of those will hold for a year to two years. Really? Yeah. Damn. Like we have NFL players and like by the third time, nothing will even move because it's not stuck anymore. So like once we get that second or third, it's like now they're good to go. You know, unless they dive into somebody's thigh with the top of their head or do something that really physically compress themselves, yeah. which of course NFL players do a lot, but yeah. wrestlers do too. Yeah. So, all right, let's go ahead and sit back up. Damn, that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, it's different spots. Yeah. That's crazy. I feel like I grew an inch. Hey, you're standing tall. Yeah, did I? You got a ruler? You got, a <laughs> <laughs> you got the height? How, how tall are you going to be to go on this, uh, on this contraption here? All right, so we're going to go right there. Pull that elbow back pretty hard. Like, like, yep. like. Yeah, go ahead. Good. Same thing here. Yeah, pull back. That's all there. Cool. All right, let's, uh, let's go on your stomach. So let's raise this leg as high as you can. Uh, knee straight, raise the whole leg. Some fancy clothes you got, bro. Yeah. 
What is this, like suede? Yeah. All right. I don't know crush, is. crush suede. <laughs> this is some Elvis Presley stuff, bro. All right, other side. Taking the King moniker pretty seriously. So the left it feels a little easier than the right. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Getting hammered with Henry C. Raise that right leg again. Okay, back down. Then get the top on that one. Get a little close to you here. Clear that muscle up too. Ah. <laughs> that adductor needs a little work. So this, ah. this is a good room for a med ball. Roll out with a medicine ball right in this area. Woosa, woosa. You got this, champ. Melts like butter. You selling merch, Henry? Uh, not yet. No? No. You gonna work on that? Yeah. You doing cameos? Yeah, I want cameo. Okay. I was gonna, by the time this comes out, you, you will have HenrySigudo.com, so. <laughs> so you heard it there. We've had HenrySigudo.com. You don't have it anymore? No, we have it. But you got merch we, on we there. Just haven't, uh, we just haven't used it. You needed some custom Triple C uh, crushed black velvet, you know, suede pants, man. Yeah, there's so much. They're so... Uh, just put your name on the side, man. Of, yeah. Why are you going to wear other people's clothes? You just All your clothes have your name on it. If I'm not narcissistic enough, we gotta turn it up another level, right? I'm for it. <laughs> I don't wear other people's brands. You see me out, you just got a plain black t-shirt on or I got my merch. By the way, it's linked below, so if you guys are getting merch, get some. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, raise that right leg again. There we go. Can I feel easier? Yeah. Yeah, left side again? Yeah. Yeah, pretty good there. Cool. Alright, let's stand up. Hang in there. Yeah. Still with us. All right, both hands here. Just gonna loop underneath there. Elbows in a little bit. <sighs> That's a hard area to get to. Yeah, that upper back. Yeah. It's hard to get on the table. Have you Damn, I honestly, I thought you had already got everything on the table. Then you did this. <laughs> you know? well, it got the center of it. We still have the facet joints there. So okay. they're, they're different angles. Yeah. So that's actually more like a traditional PT Cairo move. Um, where it's getting the facet joints. So which is you're very you're very subtle with it. Bah. Got a quick hands, right? Yeah. Just like striking. Just technique. Easy piece. Alright, we're gonna block right there, lean forward, bring that knee past my shoulder. And then lean back all the way. And then I'm gonna block there. Hips back, straighten the knee. So upper body forward and then hips back. So you're, so you're gonna be here, and then you're gonna work into that to try to stretch the top of my like ankle. Uh, you probably need to step your foot back. So I'm here, right? So as I go back, you're gonna go to there, try to straighten the knee, see how the foot's coming up. Yeah. I'm not gonna let that foot come up on you. Okay. So but but by staying in this position, uh, come to where I am. That's where you're gonna all the way to your knee straight. Yeah. And then you're gonna come back forward. So lock there. So locked in. Now go forward. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. A little further. And then go back all the way. There you go. Good, forward. And that fascist type there. And back all the way. So forward. And back. There it was. And forward. Yeah, see it open now? Yeah. Once it opens, it moves. Go forward again? Yeah. Yeah, I see. Now it's cherry? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I could uh, immediately feel the tension fucking leave, you know? Yep. Switch feet. 
Sometimes it takes seven or eight passes, but once you get it, it's good. All right, go for it. And back. This one's not as bad. And forward. And back. This one's not too bad at all. And forward. And back. Go one more time. Yeah, Jerry. Good. Cool. See how that feels on the ankles? I feel good, I feel like I'm ready to... There you go. <laughs> Salsa suhuro. Bachata suhuro. Bachata. All right, how you feeling, Henry? Feel good. Feel good? Feel good. Feel I think, good. uh... I didn't know what to expect, honestly, since the beginning. I, I, you know what I'm saying? Like, you, you, you get a new chiropractor, you get somebody that can adjust you, but if, unless you know them, it's different. And I felt like your work was very subtle, which I could appreciate. I can tell you've worked with a bunch of athletes, because it's very boop to the point. Like even uh, when you did the traction on my neck, like you gave me just the right, just the right amount of pull. Yeah. And then my neck, like my neck feels so damn loose. You know what I mean? I feel like I needed that, especially after being on the plane. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. I feel good. I feel super, super good. Sweet. So make sure you guys tune in. He's gonna be fighting for his belt against Algermain Sterling. Tune in live on pay per view, ESPN Plus. While you're at it, like we talked about before, go ahead and sub to his YouTube channel right now. HenrySudo.com, he's gonna have some merch up there. And uh, if you guys aren't, keep on the lookout for him. He's gonna be looking for triple, then quadruple. Hell, maybe even five C's one of these days. Why not? Sky's the limit, nothing's ever stopped him so far. He's got gold in his DNA, and uh, he's coming to a city near you soon. We're out!